It's also important that we, 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 we understand that it cannot be for nothing that somebody will walk to the EC and steal this machine if he doesn't have use for it. It must be useful. Motive. It, there must be a motive for stealing it. It must be useful. And if the Electoral Commission tells us today, after we have found out that the machine is in the hands of a civilian, a, a, a political party agent, the EC tells us that the only way it can be useful is when there is a, a collusion. collusion between the person having the machine and an EC official. It tells us that, yes, there was motive for stealing the machine, and that motive can become a reality if there's collusion. And Randy, is the EC in its current setup? That's a question you ask yourself. Mm -hmm. In its current setup, is it possible for the MPP to have people within the EC that will be willing to, you know, connive with the other officers outside? I mean, party officers outside. Is it possible? And I'm saying yes, because we have all seen the people who have been appointed to the EC. You know, political party communicators. You know, uh, what do you call it? Patrons uh, of, of, of the party. Still confirming what I just told No. So, so clearly, Randy, what these are curious. And no, link no, Randy. This, some challenges listen, to our earlier listen, allegation. Listen, that I am saying that. Right. I, I, I cannot. Nobody be. steals. Is that you are forcing no, no, to link listen, your earlier allegation anything with that is challenges that are being. That is not addressed. useful to him. People wouldn't have stolen the machine if they didn't think that it would be useful. The EC itself has told us that that machine can be useful with collusion from an insider. And I'm saying, do we have people in the EC today who will have risen to collude with people outside in favor of the NDP? And yes, the answer is yes, because political party communicators and patrons of the MPP have been appointed to the EC. And so it is very important that we do not dismiss these curious things. And Randy, another significant matter you should not lose sight of is the fact that this voter register has been exhibited. We are all going to the polling stations. These reports that are coming from our people, the fact that, one, the register was given to us late, 12 hours before the exhibition. The fact that the register that was given to us is different from the register that is exhibited, significantly different, is known to both the NDC and the NPP. The fact that the transfers that are curious, transfers of people who did not request for transfers, are known to the NPP and they are known to the NDC. The proxy voters who were not biometrically verified, but issued with proxy voter status, is an issue known to the NDC and known to the MPP. The multiple uh, 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 registers, uh, uh, registrants, which in some cases, Randy, let me explain to you how some of them happened. We had the offline registration and the online registration. There were times that the registration, they had difficulty with uh, connectivity, and they asked people to register offline. And then when the register was exhibited after the first you know, limited registration exercise, we didn't find their names. We were told that it will be in the uh, 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 subsequent register. It wasn't there. In some cases, we're holding the people who didn't have, I mean, who registered offline, but didn't have their names on the register, their list, with the EC directors, and they were asking us to let them register again because the offline was not captured online. And, and this fact, Randy, is known to the NDC. It's also known to the MPP. So how come? that it is only the NDC that is raising issues with it. How is the NPP so comfortable with these discrepancies? We've never, we've, uh, Why haven't they stated from... a position on these matters that are known to us and known to them? Because clearly, the register we were given, unless they were given a different register, the register that we were given as a party are significantly different from the register that have been exhibited. So how come they are comfortable with that? So the transfers have, we are you seeing. Have raised issues. You they, we have you have issues. MPP raising... candidates in Tamale South. You have MPP candidates in Tamale uh, in, in Sanargo. You have MPP candidates in Tamale North. 
and these transfers have happened there. No, the but people are saying really we did telling not us that the energy. numbers he saw how were MPP transfers yeah, or yeah, NDC let, transfers. Let, let so so yes. how come, and as I'm saying, that how come uh, that the NDC is the only party that seems to be uncomfortable with these things, and the MPP is not speaking? How do you tell these they are not? Are, they are have you heard, have you heard your party? We just read the letter of the, uh, the general secretary of the NDC. You have listened to the election director of the NDC. How come okay, the NPP as a party then, is very comfortable with, with, with these discrepancies? But Randy, you see, I need, I, need, I need to make this point, and I don't know how better to do it. Mm -hmm. Parliament may not have acted on the letter in the way that the NDC uh, 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 election directorate and others expected parliament to, to act on it. But you see, we need to understand that parliament is not a stumbling block. Parliament must be viewed always as an ally. And for example, in the case of the CI to make Ghana card, you know, the only document that could be used for voter registration purpose, the entire parliament came together both the majority and the minority, to frustrate the Electoral Commission from having its way with that. Again, the issue of the machines being stolen at the Electoral Commission, it took Parliament to get the Electoral Commission to admit to those uh, machines being uh, 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 missing. And so Parliament can be a very useful ally in ensuring that we... We, we, we get an electoral process that is satisfactory to all of us. But Randy, when I look at what we have gone through as a country, for example, activities and events that have led to, uh, 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 if you like, improvements in our electoral process, I want to believe that a different approach, rather than a focus on parliament, will give us better and faster results when it comes to our call for the Electoral Commission to be audited. I think it is a very, very crucial call. It is an important one that must be adhered to. But I think that a different approach, rather than a focus on parliament, will give us faster and better results. Remember what happened before the introduction of the biometric uh, 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 register. Even after the register was introduced, against the, even the electoral commissioner at the time's will, the parties outside, especially the New Patriotic Party, did not rest on their eyes. They demanded biometric verification machines also. And did so in collaboration with other civil society organizations and stakeholders. So, Randy, I will urge that from today, we must begin to engage the other political parties our election director has spoken of, who are also in agreement that there's a need to audit the Electoral Commission. And if it becomes necessary for us to address the nation together as one group of political parties with the concerns that are, you know, joint, and a call that is one. We must do so as soon as possible. Beyond that press conference, I think that coalition of political parties must begin to visit other civil society organizations and other key stakeholders, even including the Peace Council, to draw the attention to these discrepancies that we have noticed. And the need, the urgent need for uh, 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 an audit to be conducted on the Electoral Commission and, and especially the IT department of the uh, EC. Beyond even engaging the civil society organizations and stakeholders, I think that with immediate effect, these parties must come together to also visit the diplomatic uh, missions and development agencies because they all have interest in a peaceful election exercise in this country. And let them know how these discrepancies can threaten the peace that we all are currently enjoying in this country and how that can be uh, averted if we carry out an audit of the Electoral Commission. I think that will give us better and faster results than focusing on Parliament, which, Ms. Randy, I have said in the beginning, in the past, have not actually 
you know, uh, done anything significant, even after they have carried out investigations like the Cash for Seeds and Bachi Jaco and others, we have not seen any significant, you know, changes in the way we do things after Parliament have carried out these investigations. It's important, yes, that Parliament is, is requested to intervene, like that request has been made. But if the response, unlike other responses, like I have talked about the BVR machines being discovered, like I've talked about standing in the way of the EC when they attempted to introduce the, e the CI to make the Ghana card, if the response is not in sync with what was expected, I don't think that it should become a reason why parliament should be viewed as a stumbling block. It must always and, and, and it must always be viewed as an ally in this matter. But beyond that, let us move to the field. Let's organize among the political parties who share in our frustration, who share these discrepancies with us and think it can threaten our peace, and engage other civil society organizations and stakeholders and the diplomatic missions to ensure that we carry out a very necessary audit of the Electoral Commission before we go to the polls. I think that is what we should be doing now.